So, um, a very uh, good morning to you. Oh, I should uh, I say good morning. I should say good off, good morning, good afternoon, uh, good evening, uh, wherever you are in the world. Um, so, this uh, video, um, short film video, um, is about configuring uh, the uh, Cisco seventy nine sixty phone. It is about ten years old. It's a nice phone. Um, if you're a Cisco fan and um, you want to configure an old Cisco phone to work with the SIP protocol and you order it on eBay or somewhere else and you think, hang on a minute, this ain't working. You go on the internet and you look for all sorts of instructions to try and get uh, the phone working. Um, and then it's really confusing the materials out there. So I thought I'd do this video to try and put together everything I learned last week from knowing really very little about this. It's probably not gonna be perfect. Um, and if I have made any mistakes, I'm sorry. It's your responsibility to make sure that you back things up and um, you know basically be safe. Um, I can't take any responsibility. I'm just trying to put a video out there that brings everything together in terms of configuring uh, this phone because there's so many different bits and pieces around. So um, I've put together this uh, presentation because there's so much information there. I hope it's useful to you. Um, I did it in Open Office in Press and uh, the, um, the text is kind of um, a little bit skew with at times in terms of sizing, but hopefully it's good enough. Um, so hopefully this is useful to you. If you do have any comments, please do um, politely uh, post them in the YouTube description. Um, and so as you can see, um, as I say, this is uh, a video setting up a Cisco 7960 IP phone to work with a third party private branch exchange using a Linux computer. Now you are going to need a Linux box for this. I'm not sure, but I've got a feeling that even if you don't have a Linux box, you could potentially um, create a bootable, well, removable hard drive with a with a Linux install on it, um, maybe to achieve this. Can't be sure about that. Um, somebody, I'm sure, will correct me if that's not possible. But you could do with a Linux box for, well, you, you need it for the way that I'm, I've put together this video. I don't know how to do it in uh, Windows, to be honest. I don't know how to do it for a Mac either, because I've never owned a Mac. So if, if anyone out there knows how to do it, please do a video like this or better in, in your view. That's really easy to understand for Windows and also for um, for Mac users. Um, so this film focuses on setting up a Cisco 7960 using a computer running any flavor of Linux for the initial setup of the phone and for any changes on a local area network or a wider area network, but not in the cloud. Um, this video is not really aimed at big network engineers who probably won't need to watch this video anyway. Uh, this is probably based on people that want to set up maybe small contact centers or a couple of phones on the cheap in your office or even for your grassroots projects, which is what I use my phones for um, outreach work. Um, so this film will also cover setting up a TFTP server. We will, we will come to that. It's necessary in order to actually configure the phone. You need to trans download files you need to create files as well, um, and you need to transfer them across through a TFTP server. I'll be briefly touching on uh, DHCP um, option 150 as well, which I'll explain more uh, when we get there. Um, it's necessary in order that the phone and the uh, TFTP server can communicate with each other. I did all this on Linux Mint, actually, um, the whole thing, um, and... Um, yeah, and, but I also have an open WRT stroke lead router, which helps. Uh, it's flash with Linux, um, uh, Linux uh, firmware. Um, but anyway, um, so the setup procedure may be different for other models of Cisco phone, but a lot of this theory is likely to be the same. Can't guarantee it. I've got a funny feeling that any, any sort of phones that are a few years old now with Cisco, you're going to probably find a similar. Uh, this was correct at the time of this production in November 2019, so just be aware of that as well. Um, you know, if this if this uh, film ends up on YouTube for a decade or so, uh, you might come back to me and go, hang on a minute, that really doesn't work anymore. Probably will, though. Um, who is this film intended uh, for? I've kind of touched upon that already. People using third-party private branch exchange software, such as FreePBX, which runs on Asterisk, Fusion PBX, which runs on FreeSwitch, and 3CX, um, all um, on a LAN or a WAN. Um, in short, anybody who likes Cisco phones, but who does not want to pay out for a Cisco call manager license. A lot of the time when you buy these phones, they'll be looking 
for Cisco call manager. That's no use to you if you don't have a license for Cisco call manager, which is why I've done this video. A word of warning. If you do buy a Cisco phone, make sure that it comes with the power pack, if you're buying them secondhand, that is, um, unless you have power over Ethernet equipment already. It's important because I've got a funny feeling, particularly on eBay, um, that people are selling these phones. They, they get a bulk load of them because they're quite old. They um, take the power packs and then try and sell them separately to make more money, and they don't really always make it that obvious in the ebay listing so if you're not sure and it doesn't specifically say this comes with not only the uh, power pack but also the kettle lead and everything um because they are unique to cisco although there are a few generic power packs out there i'd be very careful with safety and things like that uh, so you want to make sure it, the power pack and it is included just say is is everything in the box so that it's ready to go including all the power things that i need and get a message uh, to the seller send one out get a response beforehand and the ebay representatives if you do have a problem can see that message because i got a bit burnt last week before i got my latest uh phone eBay have stated, though, uh, that they do not consider the sale of IP phones without the power packs to break their terms and conditions. Um, so it's about buyer beware. However, if you have messaged the seller, they've told you the power packs in there and it isn't. You can still get your money back. That's separate because you've actually, you know, sort of been told something that's misleading then if, if they lie to you. So make sure you cover yourself. Um, IP phones, such as the Cisco 7960, require a private branch exchange to function. If you don't know what one of these is, uh, you know, this isn't going to be for you. Um, because these phones, you can't just shove them in your phone socket wherever you are in the world and expect them to work on a standard phone. They won't. They need extra equipment. They can work with your phone, um, as I've put here. Uh, they do not simply plug into a BT Open Reach Virgin or any other plain old telephony system socket like BT Virgin in the UK, whatever phone, uh, landline phone system you have abroad. Uh, you can get basic switches allowing you to route calls over the standard telephone network from an IP phone, but you'd need to set all that up through your private branch exchange first and buy the extra equipment. It's, it's just not that simple. So don't go and think, oh, well, I like the look of those Cisco phones. I'm just going to plug them into the wall and expect them to work. They won't. They won't. For a start, they don't even have a standard um, phone uh, RGA45 connection on them. They need Ethernet cables, which is a good starting point. Is your 7960 looking for a Cisco, looking for Cisco call manager? So when you power up the phone, um, you just literally stick the plug in and stick um, cord in the other end. That simple. Uh, to power it up uh, there's no on and off button or something um does it have a sip icon similar to the one on the left here so, um forget the blue box i'm afraid i couldn't quite find a sip icon on its own but the sip the sip icon on the blue box is what you're looking for on the top right of the phone screen um if it's got that you're ahead of the game um if not um you need to flash your phone that means loading new bootable software on there, which is what we're going to do. Sorry, firmware. That's what we're going to do here. If it does, you need to move forward with configuring the phone to connect to your private branch exchange, but we'll cover configuration files regardless of whether your phone is already SIP ready or not. Uh, so we'll come to that. Flashing your phone with the Cisco SIP firmware, which is what you're going to need for third party private branch exchanges. So presuming you do not have that SIP icon that we talked about, you will need to flash the phone. This means putting new firmware on the phone, but it's not as scary as it seems. Honestly, I've tried to make this as easy as possible. Hopefully this video is useful, short film video. We need to visit the Cisco website to get hold of the SIP version of the Cisco firmware, okay? Some people have said you have to pay for it, but I got it for free last week. I just signed up with it and then verified my email and went on and found it. So you sign up for a free account and download the firmware that we need. Um, you, this is what you actually download. I'm going to leave this on the screen a little bit here but so, so that you can pause the video and it's on there long enough so that you can flick back to it. Hopefully the, the, my judgment on time for that is, is good enough. Um, so you download the SIP flash image 7940 forward slash 7960. So it obviously works on both. IP phone. POS3 hyphen zero seven hyphen five hyphen double zero dot zip download that from the cisco website and from nowhere else 
if you can't find it on the Cisco website or they suddenly make, you know, make the firmware expensive or something, the SIP firmware, I, I don't think they will because it's really old anyway. Um, so I don't think they're going to change it. Um, but if you do find there's a problem, I have said don't download it anywhere else, but take some really good advice if you do have to. Because realistically, if you can't get it on the Cisco website, you've got to get it somewhere. My, really what I'm advising you to do here is be dead careful about what you're putting on your computer particularly. Although this, win this uh, video is geared to Linux users just in case you're using Microsoft, for example you might end up downloading a virus or something uh, so be careful um, you unzip the files which downloaded them and we also need to add to the files that we download we need to create some files to go with those that we download so keep them all in the same directory um, now Cisco files I've learned a little bit about these they're a bit awkward oh excuse me Actually, before I do that, I did say I would actually leave that leave that screen on for it, that that particular slide on for a moment. I've just zoomed past it, haven't I? I'll just leave that there for a moment. I do apologise. Plus, I'll have a little vape as well. Right. So hopefully that's the case. So moving on. Pay careful attention to case, i.e. Um, capital, small case, etc. Sorry, not to patronise you. Some of this might appear a bit like oversimplified. I'm sorry if you feel that way. I'd just rather explain it to everybody so that somebody isn't sitting there wondering about something. Because there's nothing worse than putting your time into a video and not having your question answered. Um, I've certainly personally experienced that in this process. So pay careful attention to case as file names and contents are indeed case sensitive. Be very careful of quotations. Um, you should only ever use the double quotations, okay, not the single ones. Um, and my friend told me, um, not forward slash or backslash. I don't understand why I said that, but I've put that in here. There's something else to add that I haven't put in this presentation. I learned this yesterday. Um, be careful that you use then um, uh, these um, quotations that are ASCII, and I'm not, I'm not great on this. But basically, if you put the wrong kind of quotes or your keyboard produces the wrong kind of quotes within the firmware file, it can cause you problems. So um, I've actually created some template files. So I'm going to have a good look through them before I upload this video so that you've got them to download. The ones that you need to create, that is not the ones from the Cisco website. I don't th I think I'd get into trouble if I if I'm if I actually uh, reproduce them. So you need to go and download the actual Cisco files yourself. But the ones that we're going to talk about creating I've actually created the templates for you and I've given credit to the chap that showed how to do it as well at the end of this video because um, a lot of this is based on uh, other people's resources so I ain't just some you know genius mastermind who, who knew all this um, I'm, I'm not pretending to be either I'm not pretending to be an expert but hopefully this really gets you on your feet so in the file contents anything I've displayed in blue and you'll see that in, in my presentation as well, um, is a descriptive note to help you. It's not intended that you sit there and type it in, but you, you can make notes uh, within the files. Um, I'll come to that uh, if you want to. I'd not normally put a space in between each line within the files, um, but I have done on this uh, presentation to make it clearer to you. There is a link in the description, the YouTube description, to a template version of the files that you need to manually create, not the Cisco ones, to accompany those files that you download from the Cisco website. You can edit these templates and save typing. Firstly, you need to write down the Mac media access control address for your phone, but be really careful. There is never a letter O in a Mac address. It will always be a zero. The only letters that can be used are letters A to F of the alphabet. To get your MAC address off the phone, leave it to, once you power it up, leave it for about, about three minutes and then press the settings button. Even though it hasn't really done anything and it's just cycling around trying to do the same thing over and over again, presuming it's looking for Cisco call manager and there isn't one set up, um, you can still press the settings button after you give it a few minutes and that's what you need to do. Uh, you scroll down to network configuration and press select. You'll have a, there's like four buttons, as you can see in this image. Um, above the button, it will say select or something similar. Um, and you click on that. It's pretty self-explanatory. Um, scroll down to the MAC address section, and that's what you need to write down. But it's best to type it so that, you, you know, it's really clear. On, uh, just on your notepad or whatever, uh, on your computer or get it rather. Um, the MAC address, although it has colons in it, when we come to use the MAC addresses, 
we don't use the colons and all MAC address details, all the letters are in capitals, okay? Um, so forget about those those colons. Um, so I've shown you an example in this last paragraph here. Um, zero, zero, colon, zero, A, colon, nine, five, colon, nine, D, colon, six, eight, colon, 16. For example, in this one file, one of the files that we're gonna create would become SIP 000A959, d6816.cnf so you can see how we've actually changed that mac address uh, we've adapted it for the purposes of naming a file um so um uh, hopefully I've, i will have um, explained that more as we go on as well um through the use of color code uh, my friend said i should make it more clear so i've tried um Okay, uh, sorry, I I, always, I I hate erming. I'm sorry about that. Um, so when we download the files from the Cisco website, this is what we, we're going to have in a directory. Um, the following files are files that you've now downloaded. They should not be edited or renamed. Um, you would think from this video that you would actually edit the OS79XX.txt file. You don't. You just leave it alone. All of the ones you've downloaded, you leave alone. Um, but you just put the ones you've created into the same directory as these ones you've downloaded and we'll transfer them all together later. Files that we need to create, uh, I've touched upon this a few times already. We need to create a number of files to go with the files that you've downloaded and we need to keep them together. I mean, really what I'm saying is make sure that they're all in the same directory at the end. If you want to separate them initially and then drag them all into the same directory, fine. Just make sure that you, you know where you are with them. We're going to need to create a symlink, and I don't fully understand this, and my friend also questions whether it's necessary, but these were the instructions I used, and it got the phone working. So if you, you don't want too much trouble, I'll just follow this. <laughs> but my friend doesn't understand it, and I'm not great with symlinks. Um, but I, it, it was the instructions, and it got my phone working, as I say. A symlink will be needed uh, between two of the files that we're going to create. We've got more files to create other than those, but, but just be aware of that. This is particularly why I'm doing this uh, doing this video for Linux as well, because uh, I'm not entirely sure that you could create a symlink in Windows. Maybe you can. Uh, there'll be full instructions later. So um, here, whenever I've used blue X's, um, that means you need to replace those blue X's with your MAC address. As I say, ignore the colons in the MAC address. Make sure um, all the letters in the MAC address are in capitals. So SIP XXX means SIP MAC address <laughs> dot CNF, your MAC address uh, for your phone. Using an ASCII text editor, get it, Nano, VI, Vim, they're fine. Create the above file. Replace the XXX, as I say, with your phone's MAC address. The SIP in the file name and the MAC address must be in capitals with a .cnf file extension on the end. I'll just emphasize that at the end there. This file allows you to configure your phone, including providing the IP address of your PBX and your extension number login details from your PBX and get them on there. The next slide looks at this file in more detail. Hash within this file, and indeed any file, um, uh, with a uh, phone file for Cisco, uh, hash followed by a space, always make sure there's a space after that hash before you put your note, um, allows for one uh, a one-line note that will not be read by the phone, i.e. a code comment. You can do more of them though, uh, but just make sure you've got a hash and just be really careful how long your lines are because uh, I wouldn't want you to end up in a mess. Uh, it's one thing explaining your code so you remember things, it's another end not messing up your code. Um, where, you see a quote, where you see quotation marks, Please include them, so it's a typo there. In the following examples, the blue guide text should not be inserted into the file itself unless you want to set it out with a hash before each line uh, of what you want to copy. In my configuration files, I do not use spaces between each line. I've simply done that in this short film to make it easier to understand, as I said before. So this is the contents of this zip xxx.cnf file, or in other words, zip mac address.cnf file. I should have put those X's in blue. Uh, make sure the line below contains the same as the name of other firmware files that you've downloaded from the Cisco website without any extension on the end. Otherwise, change it. I'm going to explain this a little bit better, actually. Um, so um, here we've got this image version, POS3-07-5-0-0. Where we've got that from? Let me show you. Um, when, I, when we download the Cisco files, uh, forgive me um, for a second uh, whilst I just literally make this more obvious to you. Um, I can't underestimate the importance of this, so I've got some no quite a few notes on my... Uh, here we go. So I've downloaded this from the Cisco website. If I just open that with the archive manager for a second. What you'll see 
is that they all come down with this POS3-07-5-0. So whenever you need to um, insert that, you just take it from here, but you don't put the extension on the end um, unless the file, um, unless I've, I've said so in the header of the file. So here, for example, we do need to put .cnf on the actual file name that we, of, the, of the file we're going to create, um, but within the image version within it, we don't put the... Um, we don't put the extension on the end. Uh, so the line one name, uh, whatever you like, I'm not entirely sure about that. I think it just displays on the, on the phone screen eventually. Line one auth name, that's going to be your extension number because obviously your PBX needs to know what, what extension you're trying to log in with. Um, short name, that definitely does appear on your screen as well. Um, and your line one password, I've made these up. Um, but ultimately you put them in the double quotes as I've shown you here and just make sure they're ASCII quotes. Um, and not like other quotes um, and um, so no symbols within your password I I believe that's what Cisco phones require they say um, simple passwords but you can use letters in them and I think I'm not sure if the letters would be case sensitive or not I presume they would be uh, in your password uh, line one display name you put what you want I've just made up a name my name's not actually Tim but I just made that up um, your messages underscore URI um, I found this a little bit complicated to find actually um, but this is actually what you need to put in this file in order that the messages button on your phone works. I originally thought that the phone might be capable of some sort of text messaging or something, but the messages button actually means the button you press to get your voicemail. Um, you probably already knew that. I didn't. Um, and um, so I was trying to work out how to program that messages button. And this is how you do it. You stick messages underscore URI colon space, like everything else. Uh, double quotes inside there, the number that you want to call for your voicemail. So if you're on star 97, which mine is, uh, you can type star 97 in there. Just make sure that your quotes are ASCII quotes because I got totally totally uh, confused about that. And I, I found that the messages button didn't work properly and this is when I learned about this. I thought Gedit would be okay. Be careful to get it even um, because I had a few problems. Um, hopefully my templates will, will actually sort that out for you. Um, mess, uh, I've done messages URI, so the next uh, the next part of this file, because it couldn't all fit on the same slide, uh, proxy one ports, um, well, if you've changed your port on your PBX and you don't use it on like 5060 or 5061, depending on what you're, what you're running or what version of free PBX or 3CX or um, free switch or whatever, if you've changed that, you'd want to put that there, that port. Um, your proxy one address, it wasn't very clear to me. I'm, I'm not the world's best network engineer, uh, but that's your PBX IP address. Uh, phone label, stick what you want. It appears top right corner uh, by, the, by the SIP logo. Once you once you get that far up, like your business or whatever, your organization, stick a space on the end uh, before the quote because it actually makes it a lot neater. Otherwise, it's really, really close to the end of the phone screen. It looks a bit messy. Uh, phone password, um, I'd recommend you change it, but keep it simple because occasionally you might have to type it in on the phone and it's a bit of a pain trying to do it because you have to kind of press the buttons. It's like an old text, like an old mobile where you send text messages and you have to tap the screen, so tap the phone button so many times to get C and what have you. So just be aware of that. But you probably want to change it to something different from Cisco, which is the default. Um, user info none, uh, telnet level. To be honest, I'm not sure about the user, user info bit, but it was in the template files that I initially read, so I've kept it. Uh, telnet, well, that's telnet in the phone. I've never tried it, but presumably you can. Um, not sure why you'd want to if you've got a TFTP server, but anyway, maybe it's for debug. Uh, so our next file, um, creating MAC address .cnf .xml. Um, using an ASCII text editor, get it, nano, vi, vim. Create the above file, replacing the XX text, as I say, with your phone's MAC address. The MAC address must be in capitals with a .cnf .xml file extension on the end. The next page looks at the content of this file. Be very careful of the syntax, pretty much everything I've explained already. This file helps the phone to boot and load SIP firmware from the TFTP Trivial File Transfer Protocol server once we get that far. Um, ultimately, um, what that really means is basically when it's pulling everything across, it makes the whole thing work. It's one of the files that makes everything work. You need all these files. Uh, so here's the content of it. It's pretty simple, really. Um, again, notice that POS3 07500. Make sure it's correct for the version of the software you download. Um, on the off chance Cisco changes anything, make sure it all tallies up. Um, that's the only thing you need to change there. Otherwise, that's fine. Um, next, we need to do this more complicated symlink bit. I'm just going to leave that on the screen for a second so you can also look at it and then I'll also uh, read it out as well. Uh, maybe some people might have slight sort of um, partial sightedness or something. Maybe 
maybe that might be useful. And do you know what? I'm, I'm, I've just realised um, I've not got this in full screen now. <laughs> um, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna take it, take a step back actually, and put this in full screen. So I bet you on the video it's really tiny. I'm so sorry. Um, so let me just put that into. There we go. Um, let's go back down. I'm sorry about this. So that was um. So that was just what we read. And there's the content there for that and then we're at this uh, sim link bit which I which I said I'd leave on the screen just to, just watch you read it and then I'll read it out as well sorry about that I forgot to put it back into full screen so in terminal you run the following commands touch XML default be careful of the spelling dot cnf dot xml also be careful of the case um this is case sensitive including for the extension ln xml default dot cnf dot xml space xml default dot cnf dot xml the reason for this is because the chap that actually put together the original tutorial that i read um actually made the point that he couldn't be sure which file the phone actually required. Um, oh yeah, it's the same file, but it's um, the case is a bit different. So what he decided to do was create a sim link between the two. Um, my friend thinks it's a bit of an odd way of doing things and that you could probably just copy the contents um, twice anyway and just rename the file. But um, I'd, I'd just stick with what he said because it got my phone working. Um, ne next, you would go into Vim or any te text editor you want followed by XML default dot CNF dot XML that, that be careful which version you're opening there. Um, we now need to edit this file that will have been created and opened um, by this point because you've hit enter obviously um, on each of these commands um, and um, then we insert some text. Um, you can copy the text from the files I've linked to the in the YouTube description but please make sure that you create the sim link within the directory of all of the files that you've created. In other words, copy my text um, for, for, for the content, but don't actually just um, tr drag and drop the files, actually create the, uh, that file. That's why I've only created one of these, I haven't created the other one, um, so that um, you can at least copy from it. So um, yeah, follow this to the letter, but I've actually given you the text you need to put into the file in the uh, YouTube description. Uh, there'll be in some files that, uh, that I intend to put on the web server and put a link to for everything you need except for the Cisco um, firmware that you need to download yourself. This is the content of it. Um, to be honest with you, God, God's honest, I don't really understand most of it, um, but this is the content you need to put in. Um, so there you go. But that, as I say, this will be in the file anyway. It'll be, I'll make it available to you to save your typing. Um, that's the second part of the same file. Couldn't fit it all on the screen. Um, I've just highlighted uh, that, that that this is the only bit that you you might need to look at, that blue bit there, the POS3 bit. So I've highlighted that again. Just make sure that matches uh, your uh, Cisco firmware files that you've downloaded. Creating SIP default.cnf. Um, so this is, uh, this is a different file now that we need to create. Here you will need to make sure the image version matches your other download downloaded file names. Um, I think that's. I think I'm referring to the content of the file. I'll look at that in a second. I hope I haven't made a mistake. You will need to provide the proxy address. That's the PBX address, as I said before. You'll need to specify the phone password as you did before in the other file. Make sure it's the same as what you provided before. You'll need to specify the SMTP time server, time zone, and time format. Not having a time server will not stop the phone functioning, but it is helpful to actually obviously have the time on your phone. Um, I. 
didn't know how to set up an SMTP server, to be honest with you. So I just used the content that was <laughs> that was in the file uh, um, and, and just left it on this random address, which doesn't actually go to a time server, but it still works. Uh, I'll play with it at some point. The following page, uh, the following slide, shows the content of this file. There we go. Uh, uh, here we go. Um, so, so that's where that um, image version that I was uh, asking you to make sure matches is. It's in the content like I thought. I just didn't put it in blue. I put the note in blue instead. Um, so your proxy one address obviously needs to be your PBX. Um, for all these other proxy two addresses, leave them in there just with just with those quotes. Do you see how those quotes are just like, they're almost like lines going down, no curls on them. That's the kind of quotations you need, two of them on each side. Um, not these ones that curl. If, the, if they're the curly ones, they won't work. Uh, so that's the kind of quotes you need. So have a good look at that um, and make sure that, you know, around around all your values uh, where there are quotes. Some of, the, some of the values don't have quotes, I've noticed, and that's just how it was in the file. So leave them like that. If you see a quote, just make sure um, that it's that kind of you know, double quotation around the around the contents. Um, and um, there's your there's your password bit again and the time server bits. Um, if you obviously you'll want to look into your time zone and make sure that it's in the right format. Uh, for example, mine here in the UK is GMT. Um, the 24 hour time format, um, if you set that to one, interestingly without a quote around it, um, that shows time in a 24 hour format. If you set it to zero, I presume it puts PM and AM. I've not tried it. Um, again, date format, you want to mess around with that because um, if you're in the UK, you probably won't want it the American way. Um, I haven't got as far as actually getting the time to actually change that format yet. Um, but I've got the phone working. It connects to my private branch exchange, fine. Next, we need to create dialplan.xml. We've done the complicated bit, you'll be glad to note. Um, the, the sim link was probably the most complicated bit. Um, but hopefully those commands uh, make it a lot easier for you. Uh, creating dialplan.xml. This is a simple file to override Cisco's default behavior, where the phone will wait five seconds before dialing the number after you've typed it on the phone. It's a bit of a delay. You're just sitting there waiting for it for five seconds to actually call. Um, if you put this file in, it'll stop that um, and make it dial straight away. Nothing needs editing in this file. You simply need to copy and paste it, unless you want your phone to wait five seconds. If you're one of these people that dials a number and you want a moment to think about what you're going to say, you might want to keep the five-second behavior. Um, here's the content for that. Not as simple as I thought it would look. I, I don't, again, understand the content, but it works. I can tell you it works. Sorry. I went a bit fast past that. Um, next, um, this is a fun bit. Um, if you want more than two ringtones on your phone, the standard Cisco ringtones, um, there's a lot more to creating a ring uh, a ringtone than than this uh, what this presentation covers. But the basics are that the 7960 comes with two ringtones as standard. If you want more, do the following: create a subdirectory amongst all your other files called ringtones. In that case. Uh, with small r in other words uh, you put any ringtones for cisco phones that you download or create in there create a file where all of your other files are called ringlist.dat so in other words don't create this ringlist.dat in the subdirectory create it where the other files are above that subdirectory called ringtones and you call that ringlist.dat notice that the dot dat is in capitals so is the r for ringlist specify each of the ringtones in the following format within that file and you can see that there, CTU24, which is the name of the ringtone, with a space, and then the relative path. And uh, as, as it suggests here, the file needs to be a .raw file. There's more to it than that. You can go onto YouTube. There's plenty of videos on creating these or converting uh, ringtones to the right format for the phone. And you can do it in Audacity as well. It's not as difficult as it looks. And there's some really good tutorials out there that are about a minute or two long showing you how to do that. Um, so work with this and also other YouTube videos uh, for how to um, how to create um, compatible ringtones for the phone. Um, as it says here, browse YouTube for more instructions, including the required format. Uh, more than the dot raw, of course, um, i.e. Um, sample rate and things like that. Um, so here's a checklist of what you should now have in your directory ready to go. This is a combination of the files you've downloaded and the files you've created. There are 14 in total if you want to count them. If you've got one missing, you probably want to go back on this video and see see what you've missed. You can always start again if necessary. Don't worry, you're not gonna. It's not gonna be the end of the world. It's just a little bit more time for you. So there, there. Okay. Uh, obviously, again, where I've put the uh, blue um, in there 
um, that means that you replace that with your MAC address. <clears throat> Don't forget capitals, no, no colons uh, for your MAC address. Um, and if you see um, a zero, it's always a zero. It's never an O because you can't have a, the letter O in hexadecimal, i.e. you can't have a letter O in the MAC address. You can only have a zero in there. So it will be a zero. Uh, I'm borderline dyslexic. It drives me barmy. Um, but I just wanted to make that point clear. You may have an additional file for the sim link. I noticed mine did, but it seems to have disappeared since. But don't worry about that. Just transfer that across as well. It'd be fine. Um, don't rename the OS79XX.txt, though. Now, you'll notice I haven't put that XX in blue. Deliberately just leave it as XX when you put it onto the phone. So we get to transfer in these files now. Although in this slideshow, although in this slideshow, I haven't made it totally clear. At this point, um, take the power cord out the phone. We'll come to that, but just do that now if you're following this at this point. Um, <clears throat> there are reasons for that that I'll come to. To transfer files, we need to set up a TFTP. I've never heard of this Trivial File Transfer Protocol Server. The next section will take you through how to do that in Linux. If you do skip ahead, um, and you know better than me. Just please don't forget to set the DNS option 150 to point to your TFTP servers, LAN or WAN IP. If you don't have a clue about that like I didn't, don't worry, I've covered that. Um, I, I've, I've had to sort of point uh, further on, I've had to point you in a bit of a different direction for the actual, uh, for setting up a DHCP server because it's a bit outside of this uh, tutorial. But if you have opened WRT, you're in luck because I have opened WRT and I've covered that on your router. You can actually then set the DHCP by logging into the router from the shell, uh, i.e. in terminal via SSH, via SSH. I think it said via. <laughs> um, so we'll now be focusing on setting up a TFTP server on Linux. I use my laptop running Linux Mint uh, as a dual boot. I happen to have Windows and, and Linux on there. I don't know, don't know why I put that in there. It's not that relevant, really. But, um, you know, I, th I guess what I'm saying is if you have Windows on your laptop, um, you can also have Linux as well. So if you're configuring phones and things on a fairly regular basis or you want to update your phone or your phones are working, work in progress and you do little bits on it every so often once you've got it up and running, um, you want to make it better or add features or whatever else. You might want to keep a side by side uh, Linux installation on your laptop and have a dual boot. I think that was my point. Um, the TFTP server doesn't need to be running all the time though, so don't worry, if you shut down your laptop it ain't going to knock your phone off. Um, it's only needed to provision phones, i.e. to get them up and running and to make changes um, and to update them indeed. When you edit the files, what you do if you want to change anything is you to edit these files um, and then I'd say make a backup of your file just, just to be on the safe side. Um, and then when you restart your phone doing star 6... You hold down star, you hold down six, and then you press settings on your phone if you ever want to restart it without pulling out the power. Uh, but at the moment, we want your power cord out. Um, and uh, I'll come to that. Um, so you just basically, you change the uh, files on the on the TFTP root directory, which we'll come to. Um, and, um, and then you'd restart the phone, star, hold that down, six, hold that down, settings, and you should see it flash, and then it will restart, and it will take uh, the new files off off the off the tftp server then as long as your laptop's running and your tftp server's running my settings will leave your tftp server running all the time whenever your laptop's booted up in linux um i haven't uh, bothered sort of um looking at how to stop it i don't see the point you might as well just make your life easy if you ever want to play with it um do anything um so the TFTP server doesn't need to be running all the time. It's only needed to provision phones and to update them. When you edit the files, you then restart the phone with the TFTP server running and the phone would update with the new files you'd put on the TFTP root directory within that, sorry. DHCP server option 150. In order to transfer your files using the TFTP server, you need to tell your DHCP server, that could be your router, uh, but it could be your laptop as well. You can install DNS mask to make it your make it your laptop that works this out, uh, in which case you'd have to plug the phone into the laptop instead of your router. I plug my laptop into my router using OpenWRT. Um, so in order to transfer your files using the TFTP server, you'd need to tell your DHCP server, which could be your router, what IP address your TFTP server is on. You'll need to find the LAN, local area network IP, internet protocol that is, address for the machine that your TFTP server is running on. 
Now, in Linux, presuming this TFTP server is running on your laptop like it is for me, you type ifconfig into the uh, terminal. Um, that's different from the Windows one, which I can't remember off the top of my head. I think it's just ipconfig in Windows, but in Linux, it's ifconfig, so don't get caught out. Uh, so when you see your 192, presuming you're on a small small network, it'll be a 192 low, uh, LAN address, or oh, one address, whatever. The 192.x, with the X being the rest of the IP address, <laughs> not literally X, will be your IP, presuming you're doing this from home or on a small network. Otherwise, if you're working on a larger network, um, you're going to know how to find your IP anyway. Um, so we get that, we make a note of that. There are a few ways to set up the DHCP server option 150. The easiest is if you have access to the DHCP tables um, on your router. For example, on a router running LEAD or OpenWRT firmware, you'd insert the following into uh, into uh, the uh, into VI once you run VI space etc. config DHCP. That's the file. Um, you'd stick in there under your. I haven't put this, so I'm really sorry I haven't put this, but it'd be under your LAN area. It'd be under your LAN area, I think, if I remember correctly. Um, I'm going to look at that in just a second. List DHCP underscore option. Um, notice this format. Um, and then um, one. F it's got a single quotation, 150, then a comma, before your IP address, 192.168, for example, dot one, dot three, whatever it is, uh, single quote on the end. Just be aware of that. This 150, um, then as a comma. Uh, and the whole thing's in singular quotes. Now, just so I don't give you wrong information, I'm going to log into my router and, and just make sure that I tell you exactly where to put this. So forgive me while I just do that. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry that I've uh, not really explained it properly. I don't want to give you wrong advice. You've got to be really careful when you work with lead. Uh, just make sure that you're doing it properly. Um, so... I always forget this command because I, I have a... I need to do the port switch. Um, I think I've done this right, otherwise you're going to laugh at me. There we go. Um, so um, for this, what we'll do is, I'm sorry, I just need to copy this myself. Um, so we need uh, VI X. Actually, do you know what? Um, I'm just going to do cap. Uh, cat etc just to display the contents of the file uh, cat etc sorry being dyslexic I struggle a little bit config DHCP right um, so I'm just going to scroll up to the relevant section for you so mine's under where is it yeah um, so when if you, if you do have open WRT and you go into this file uh, you're going to need to look under config space DHCP space uh, the singular quote LAN. And what you want to do is just add it onto the bottom of the list. So as you can see, I've done mine here. Um, it's just there. I'll just put that in big. For you. I don't know if it makes much difference. Hopefully that's a little bit better for you. Um, list DHCP underscore option. And then this space singular quote 150 comma. And then your IP address. My TFTP server, as you'll notice, is on uh, 192.168.1.187. Yours will be on something different, I'm sure. So don't just copy that. Uh, you want to make sure it's the right IP address, as I explained earlier. And then once you've done that, of course, make sure you save it as usual. I haven't bothered saying click enter and click save. I presume you realise that. Uh, you, or, you know, sort of run the save commands rather and, and such like, depending on where you are. Um, so be very careful when you work uh, with DHCP and make sure that the settings that you use, sorry, I need to put this in, in full screen again. <laughs> there we go. Um, oh, oh, isn't it annoying when that happens? I'm so sorry. I've never, I've not really used this before, this um, impress. I'm not particularly impressed with it, to be honest with you. Um, uh, yeah, so here we go. Be very careful when you work with DHCP and make sure that the settings that you use are correct for your router if you do do it this way. Um, then once you've done that and, you, and you've and you actually saved, saved that file as I've just explained, make sure you run etc. init.d uh, DHCP restart there, but make sure you do it with the right format because I haven't exactly said slash etc. But you can see it there. Forward stroke etc. Forward slash init.d forward slash DHCP space restart. Otherwise, um, it won't take effect. So you need to restart that, that, that particular service on the router. And you do it by using that command for lead. 
Now, I'm using a reasonably up-to-date version of Lead, but I reckon that command's been around for a while, so I'm um, sorry. <laughs> Just done that again, haven't I? I'm so sorry. Here we go. Um, if you do configure DHCP option 150 on your router, make sure that you check the correct way of doing this for your own router. If you're running OpenWRT, I've already covered it, or Lead. Uh, they use uh, OpenWRT lead, um, same difference really. Just depends on the version as to what they called it at that time. A good starting point is to search your router model and DHCP option 50 without any quotes and without the and obviously. Um, just search like that, type in your router model and uh, router and model etc. and DHCP option 150, you'll see some instructions. Um, I'll probably cross-reference it with a second source and make sure that the two say the same thing if you, you look at two two options on Google and, and just make sure they're saying the same thing to you or, or ask some questions about what the differences are and safely establish that you're doing things the right way. You don't want to mess up your DHCP tables. I am effectively trying to sort of give you this kind of um, slight warning there. Just please don't mess up your DHCP um, because you could end up um, stuffing up your router. If you can't do this on your router, um, I'm really sorry if you can't. It's a pain. Um, and I'm not an expert in this, so it's outside of this tutorial. But you're going to need to set up a DHCP server on the same computer as your TFTP server. Um, I say I'd recommend DNS Mass. Really, my friend would recommend DNS Mass, Paul, who, who's um, acted as a bit of a consultant for this video. Um, I've included a link in the YouTube description for that, though. Um, and if you do use DNS Mask, make sure that you don't use DNS Mask built-in TFTP server. Because otherwise, you're going to end up with two of them. And I'd rather take you through the instructions here, which I know work, than leave you to try and do that yourself. Um, essentially, don't take any steps to activate the built-in TFTP server within DNS Mask. You'll actually have to go to some effort to do it. Um, if you leave it, it just won't be activated. Um, and and um, instead, follow the Zine TD instructions here instead, as it will cause problems having two running at the same time. If you struggle uh, with setting up the DHCP server option 150, you can approach the hash networking channel. Um, all IRC channels either have one hash or another hash um, on IRC's free node network. Download the free and open source IRC program Hexchat. It's called Hexchat. The program is free, so it's free node. You don't have to pay anything um, to start. And um, there are lots of YouTube videos on how to get started with Hexchat IRC and free node on YouTube. Um, and the network, uh, free node and the network and channel, as I say, are also free. Um, the people in there can be very short, quite frankly, rude um, and a little hurtful at times. It can be really blunt. Um, but just take that with a pinch of salt. They don't know you. Uh, don't take it personal. And just stay patient and polite with them um, and let any rudeness go over your head. Of course, there's no pay if, for no pain, there's no gain. It's worth doing to get the answers to your questions and get up and running if you are having problems. But if you do use them, they expect you to have tried to research the problem yourself. You don't have to do much. If you're totally stuck and you've done what you can, that's good enough. Just say, oh, look, I've, I've been on Google. I've read this. I don't understand that. I've, then I've gone and read this and I'm totally confused. All I want to do is get this DHCP um, server up and running. Um, and I want it. I don't want it to have. Um, I don't want it to use the built-in TFTP server. I just want it to use Zine TD, which I've already gone through. That's what you'll say to them. Because by the time you've seen the next few slides, you will have done. Um, check the link provided in the description for DNS Mask. There is a sample configuration file there, and you should attempt to read this before approaching the networking channel. So we move on to installing the Zine TD TFTP server. Although I've got a picture of the Cisco phone, this is indeed on your laptop, um, running the flavour of Linux. In terminal, run the following commands. sudo apt-get, uh, using the aptitude package manager. Um, you can probably use, uh, use a synaptic or, or someone else. Um, so it presumes, I'm presuming you're using a Debian-based Linux flavour, to be fair. Uh, otherwise, I believe yum. I will help you on CentOS, and I'm sure there's others out there. sudo app get install Zine TD. sudo app get install ft. Sorry, I'll start again. sudo app get install tftp space tftpd. I believe that's a daemon. Um, sudo get it or any other file that you want to edit with, um, etc. Zine td dot d forward slash tftp. Um, as I say, you can use the, your favourite um, text editor once you've hit enter on that last command 
Uh, presuming you've got get it installed and you've got some GUI interface on your Linux, um, it's going to pop up uh, that file for you to, to edit. It's going to create it and it's ready for editing and putting your content. Here it is. Um, you put this content inside. Be careful of uh, I's and L's. Um, I always confuse them. Um, you can see it here. It's, it's much more clear. TFTP, by the way, runs on port 69 if you're interested. Uh, UDP protocol. Um, now, see where it says server underscore args? Well, that address there is actually where you're going to put your files. Um, so your, your um, root directory for the TFTP server where you put files for transfer is var lib TFTP boot. And it's that directory that you put them in. Um, you'll want to know that. Um, so you save that and close it. As I've put here, transfer all your files to Varlib TFTP boot. I use the graphics user interface, i.e. drag and drop, as I'm rubbish at using terminal to move files, to be honest with you. So what I do, just to quickly show you, is I'll go using this, and you know, you'll have something similar if you've got a GUI uh, file system. Um, go to your var directory there. Um, and uh, var, uh, lib. Don't don't go to lib. You go to var, then you go to lib. So don't just go to lib instead of var by accident. If you're a little, if you find it a little bit confusing, getting you finding your way around a Linux system. Uh, and now we go down to um, TFTP boot here, and you'll notice that my directory, my files are all in there. And that's what you do there. Going back to um, do you know, I'm wondering if, if there's a way of, of getting this in without having to go backwards and forwards like I have been. To be honest, I don't know, so I'm sorry I'm going to have to do that again. Um, we're on slide 32. Yeah, this item. I'm sorry about this. I, I'll, I'll, just, I'll see if there's any decent editors for Linux and try and cut this out. If I don't, I haven't been able to go, um, tidy this up a bit for you, so I'm sorry about that if I haven't. Otherwise, you won't know this because <laughs> I'll cut this whole thing out uh, where I've been zooming through. Um, so transferring the files to your 7960, now that you've set up your DHCP to tell your network and your phone where the TFTP server is, if you haven't already, pull out the power cord, but I did say to pull it out earlier, uh, from your phone and place all of the downloaded and the creative files into that directory we just talked about, varlib TFTP boot. Make sure an Ethernet cable is connected to the phone. Um, and also the other end. It depends whether if you're using OpenWRT, you want the other end of the Ethernet cable in your router. If you've set up a DHCP server on your laptop, you're going to want to connect the other end of the Ethernet cable from the phone to your laptop itself. Next, you want to power the phone up now. So you put the power back in. But as soon as you do, as soon as you do, hold down the hash button uh, um, and um, uh, you'll, you'll see... Uh, you'll see that there um, on the second paragraph. You hold that down, and on the screen it should say reset key detected. As soon as that comes up, what you do, uh, it sounds a bit daft, but you go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, um, star, zero, hash. And as soon as that happens, it says, uh, do you want to save the config or something similar? You say no to that. Um, and then it's, it, it, it basically starts going through its cycle, pulling off, if, if everything's gone to plan, pulling everything off your TFTP boot directory and pulling it onto the phone. Um, I would recommend leaving it alone for 15 minutes. By all means, sit there and watch the screen because I was curious what it did. Just don't touch it for 15 minutes. 15 minutes is a really excessive amount of time. But the reason for that is I don't want you to half transfer your files and, you know, God knows what would happen. Um, it only took me about five minutes before the phone come up. But you'll know you'll know when it come up when it comes up anyway, because um, it will stay steady. Uh, the screen will suddenly come up with, um, you know, for example, if you've put a little uh, organization name that will display on the phone. Um, it'll also have the SIP logo that I showed you in the first um, first slide on the right. You'll also see your extension number, presuming you've put that as your as your line one short name. Uh, you, you'll you'll see that all on the screen, and it'll suddenly have the capabilities to be able to make calls and things. If you don't get any sound um, in free PBX, particularly if you're running an old version, double check on your extension and your extension settings on the free PBX GUI interface. Um, or at least in asterisk settings if you work purely with asterisk uh, or any other um, uh, PBX um, setup. Make sure you turn the NAT off, the network address translation, because I'd left mine on and it used to work with my old Spa um, Cisco phone, but it meant that I had no sound 
um, on my uh, 7960. So turn the NAT off on the extension settings for your own private branch exchange on that extension that you're going to use with the phone um, if, you, um, if you find you have no sound. Uh, phone don't ring, etc. And it, it all works pretty neat then. Um, all being well, the phone should start picking up the files to be transferred. Leave it a good 15 minutes, as I say, to be on the safe side. Make yourself a coffee, have something to eat, whatever. I'm sure there's a billion other things you want to do. Um, although it might only take five minutes. You should see the SIP logo on the top right of the phone screen if successful amongst everything else I've said. Uh, you'll have your line and your line number and any organisation name, that kind of thing. So now that's really it. So so just to, just to provide credits, because I don't like plagiarism. I hope I've covered everyone. Um, I'd like to credit the following sources and thank those people for their contributions to the open source community that I've referenced. Um, a lot of the things that I've, uh, the, a lot of the uh, sort of set, uh, a lot of the um, setup, um, I've actually took from um, a website called Sifters Wiki. I've put the link there as well. Um, Dave Benwell from 3CX, uh, sorry, 3CX um, had a video on YouTube uh, which basically showed what needed to go into a lot of the custom files. Um, and I also um, found a few more custom files that were needed from um, Sifters Wiki. So between the two of them, uh, I've managed to put those files together for you. So thanks to Dave Benwell from 3CX for his video as well. I like his style. He's really down to earth. I like him. Um, Pedro, Pedro Manuel Gomez, I hope I pronounced that right, Portillo Lopez, um, for his TFTP server film on YouTube. So you can look that up. Um, and um, it's basically the same as what I've put in here. Um, so I, I got that from him. And there's a link there. My friend Paul Furtzer, um, who's uh, had endless patience with me, really has. Uh, I was so frustrated. It took me eight, eight hours to try and set up my phone. This is why I did this video, because I thought I'd try and make it easier for you. Um, so Paul helped me out loads with that and he's also looked over this uh, th this uh, presentation a few times um, and given me quite a few tips on how to make it a bit more sort of uh, well, better for you. Um, some people take offence if you do not credit Linux as GNU Linux. GNU Linux and Linux are exactly the same thing. I, I deliberately didn't put that earlier because I thought it might confuse some people. Um, but it's not to be rude and it's not to, uh, to um, undermine um, the value of uh, the GNU team and and the Linux uh, sort of uh, open source developers more widely. Of course, they're in incredibly important, and I'm sure we're all very grateful to them. Uh, but I've just called it called Linux Linux throughout my uh, presentation. But really, it's GNU Linux. Uh, but if I put that at the start, some people would be sitting there thinking it was some you know alternative form of Linux or something, and it would have just confused people. So I've just put that at the end. Um, so there you go. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, the last thing is, um, I was actually on the Cisco um, Freenode IRC channel, and there was a guy, quite frankly, who wasn't particularly pleasant. Um, so um, I've put, lastly, a thank you to the Cisco channel on Freenode, particularly K. McKel uh, McElroy, uh, one who referred to me and others who use Cisco equipment on open source PBXs as asterisk jokers. He was really rude. Um, so to pay homage to him, let's own the phrase. Uh, whilst he continues to pay through the nose for Cisco call manager. Well, who's a joker really? He's paying out for it, not us. Um, so, um, you know, own it. Even if you don't use asterisk, um, you know, it's the same difference. Um, you know, uh, you're apparently a, a third party PBX joker. So here's a little certificate you can print off and put your own details in. Um, so this is to certify that your name has attained the position of asterisk joker special achievement award. Uh, cheers to Kay McElroy, who clearly thinks he's above everybody else on uh, Cisco. Some people out there, they just love putting people down, don't they? Um, I hate people like that. I believe that knowledge should be shared, and I hope this presentation has been useful to you. So finally, uh, well done. It's not the easiest task to undertake in provisioning these phones. Um, I sh I'm sure there will be a whole bunch of things that could be better explained or even a few mistakes. I'm sorry about those if I have. Uh, please do politely comment below on YouTube. Uh, please do keep an eye out for others who need help. You'll probably find people that are a bit desperate going, you know, and I might miss it myself because I'm so busy. Uh, so please, if, if you know how to answer a question, please answer it for someone to help them out. Because nothing worse than being the person that never, you know, never gets anywhere with all of this. Um, thank you for watching and please do give the video a thumbs up and share if it's helped you. As I say, sorry that the font sizing is a little odd um, in LibreOffice and Press that I've used for this video. 
Um, I was not entirely impressed uh, with it either as a dyslexic and also a dyscalculic. I struggle with maths and English, um, more maths than English, but English can throw me a little bit sometimes. Uh, Windows and Mac users, I'm sorry I haven't really catered for you, um, but if you are one, uh, a, a, a Windows or a Mac user and uh, you come across this uh, video and you decide to watch it, please will you do something on this level that's really well explained and, and try and avoid any confusion and make it dead simple for people. I've tried my best here. You'll get an idea from, from the way I've done this uh, that I've tried to make this as accessible as possible to, to people that might be starting out with phones, little grassroots projects, things like that. Uh, and maybe there's something useful for someone you know a bit bigger. I doubt it though because people that are big network engineers probably won't need this video but then again if you did watch this out of interest and you know how to produce you know how to do it to set these phones up for windows on mac can you put together a comprehensive video like this please because it's all over the place on youtube um, and i'm sorry that i haven't been able to cater for you if indeed you are a windows or a mac user but hopefully some of this information is useful there is actually a link on the openwrt um website so look it up um for um how to set up a tftp server um actually sorry no how to set up a dhcp server for windows and mac and as part of that it comes up with a tftp server so um you might want to use that altogether, or you might want to use my my video for the bits that you can salvage um for a for using a windows or a mac um system to configure uh, the 7960 and similar phones so that's everything i hope that's been useful to you um, and thank you very much for watching. Um, I've produced um, this video in um, OpenWRT as well. Um, and I've just, as I said, I've just used a, basically the equivalent of a PowerPoint presentation and um, OpenWRT. So if you were looking to make a window for, uh, sorry, uh, a short film video uh, for um, Mac or Windows users, um, then um, yeah, OBS is free. Um, so that'll allow you to do that. And then of course you can, uh, I don't know if it needs converting, but I'll have a look at that later and upload it to YouTube, etc. So you can do exactly what I've done then if, if you'd be kind enough to. Um, and thank you again for watching. I think that'll be it.